Tell me about safety on a routine domestic flight like BWI to DFW. Well, the best thing you can do to make that safe is get yourself vaccinated. And then once you're vaccinated, that really eliminates your worries. Okay, but we're not. I mean, what I'm hearing is we're getting percentages, and John's been better at me that the herd immunity and all that. We're nowhere near that. So, <coughs> excuse me, what's your prescription for May and June if I got to go BWI to DFW? How do you treat that? Well, as a vaccinated person yourself, and, you know, that's that's where the difference is with herd immunity. It's about everybody else. But with you being vaccinated, you're going to get on the plane and you're going to wear a mask and you're going to do all the things you, you used to do. That's what vaccines give us, freedom, the ability to travel. I know I'm going to be traveling next month and I'm very happy to be vaccinated. Doctor, we share that view. We're vaccinated too. But as we've talked about repeatedly over the last several weeks, what you just said is not the message the CDC often conveys. For that matter, traveling, we're talking about domestic travel. What about travel between here and Europe, here in London? Why aren't we talking about this more, Doctor? What's holding us back? Well, there's a lot of complicating factors in terms of traveling internationally, and one of them is the changing policy environment. So I was, you know, looking ahead, planning the, the summer vacations, and that was one of the things that I was really worried about was what was going to happen to me and my family once we arrive. I mean, you know, if the adults are vaccinated, I can protect the kids with masks and distancing and other things, but um, not knowing if we're going to have to be quarantined or if, or if plans are going to change, you know, perhaps even in mid-transit. That's challenging. And also, um, here in the U.S., we're in much better circumstances uh, in terms of our daily case numbers than many other countries are. And again, all owing to the incredible vaccines that we've been using. You mentioned um, so, protecting your children. Just to jump in, yeah. Doctor, we played some sound about three minutes ago from a doctor who works for Pfizer who said that this is a watershed moment in our ability to fight back the COVID-19 pandemic. Do you think vaccinating 12 to 15-year-olds is a watershed moment in our ability to fight back the COVID-19 pandemic? No. I mean, I think it's going to give a number of parents a peace of mind that they didn't have before. I think many parents are very eager to get their kids vaccinated because they want their kids to be able to return to activities. I haven't felt that vaccines have been necessary to make that happen, but if that's what's standing in the way, then, I, you know, it's, a, it's a, again, another path to freedom. Mm -hmm. But really, if we want to get serious about ending the pandemic, what, what would be a watershed is if we vaccinated working populations around the world, or in particular, people that we know are, are quite vulnerable vulnerable from death. If we are able to defang this virus and use vaccine to take deaths off the tables, you wouldn't be hearing about it. Jennifer, is it feasible to take our fancy vaccines and run them over to India or other beleaguered nations? Is it something yeah. where you say, yeah, we can do that? Yeah, I mean, it's easier than you would think. I know, you know, the, the requirements to keep it very cold are um, not without challenges, but they're challenges that have been overcome in even, um, you know, more difficult settings. So, for instance, the Democratic Republic of Congo has been able to do it in an epidemic situation. So um, it's, it's a wrinkle, but it's a wrinkle that can be overcome. I, I look, Jennifer, at where we are, and of course, for John and I, it comes back to the hospitals. We're really starting to see the death count come down. Are the hospitals near... Normality where other medical functions are being done, other other procedures and such are being uh, done, or is it still on a COVID alert? Yeah, I mean, I think they haven't fully relaxed alert because they recently did have to um, staff up a bit when there was that bump in cases that, you know, everybody sort of, many people worried was going to be a deadly uh, fourth surge. It didn't fortunately manifest that way, although some parts of the country were hit quite hard, uh, Michigan probably being the most, uh, you know, notable example. Um, but I think it's really important to look at hospitalizations and deaths going forward. That's what we're using the vaccine to do, is to tame the virus and to take off the table its ability to put people on the hospital or kill them. And yep. as we see those numbers drop, that's how we get back to normal. It's not about herd immunity where we stop the virus from circulating. It's about no longer feeling, fearing COVID more so than we would the common cold.